This has been kind of discovered 40 years ago, and um, I'm sure you're aware of, of a lot of um, um, scientific research over the years um, that has occurred. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of studies which I think are still relevant, which is the, the five-year follow-up of DEFER. DEFER was a, one of these early trials done in the late 90s where people were categorized, if you will, based on their FFR. They actually used a cutoff point of 0.75 back then, which eventually became 0.80. But the idea was, if your FFR was low, 0.75 or less, you get, you get PCI. That's the reference group. If the FFR was above 0.75, patients got randomized, right? They got randomized to either deferral, which means medical therapy, or perform PCI anyway, right? Because there was an angiographic stenosis, and so back then it was kind of justified. And as you see, the results here, patients who, who got deferred with a non-significant FFR had a 3% event rate. Those who had a stent doubled the event rate, and of course those with low FFR had, had the highest event rate. And so that's kind of the early studies indicating that there might be value in this technology. And of course, maybe the most uh, prominent or famous study is the FAME trial, of course, which looked at about 1,000 patients with multivessel disease, and they randomized patients to an angiographically guided strategy versus an FFR um, guided strategy. And so um, the main results, um, I'm sure you're aware, was that the FFR guided PCI was superior in terms of major adverse cardiac events. And also, by the way, they had fewer stents placed because some of those angiographically significant quote unquote stenosis were not significant by physiology, and so they were deferred um, in the treatment. But I want to point out to you a couple of interesting findings in the trial, which is that you see these Kaplan-Meier curves separate right away. And there's a pretty substantial difference between the two. And so why does that happen? Because the patients who had an angiographic guided PCI had more stents placed. And so the definition at the time for a pair of procedural MI was like three times troponin or something like that. So it was a very um, you know, soft definition, if you will. Not sure how clinically relevant that is. And so a lot of events occurred early on, which I think from a clinical standpoint might not be so important. And so when you kind of move this arrow over to the one year rate, you see that the pretty large proportion of patients at one year um, actually had this paraprocedural event, which I don't know how, again, important that is clinically. And so a lot of people say, well, if FAME was repeated today, you know, with the stent technologies we have today, with the safety of PCI that we have today, you know, maybe it wouldn't be a positive trial. Well, guess what? It was repeated. It's called Future FFR, and it was basically the same trial, a, a little fewer patients, about 950 patients or so, but same strategy, multivessel disease, angio-guided versus FFR-guided um, um, PCI. And at one year, guess what? The outcome is identical, right? There was no difference whatsoever um, when we're looking at this strategy in current times. And so the lessons that I kind of take from this is that, you know, for the fellows in particular, don't just treat a number. Understand the context in which you're doing physiology um, with, with respect to your patient, your clinical presentation, and all the other data you have. We know that um, FFR or physiology in general is not a perfect test for the reasons I mentioned before. I didn't even mention the technique issues, which also you know, plays a role, but obviously you guys have meticulous technique here, so I didn't have to mention it in this context. But the truth is that basically all recent FFR trials were negative, right? And so maybe that's because when we're doing pretty good PCI these days, especially when we use imaging, it is much safer than it used to be. And maybe you know, physiology is not as helpful in making a decision whether or not you should be treating. And then the last point, I think, generally speaking, is the most important is be a doctor, not a technician. So in this case, again, it's a you know, pretty um, obvious situation that there's a problem in this LED. I don't think you need physiology to tell you that you're going to have a low number when you measure distal physiology. But the questions that are important is not whether this is abnormal or normal. The question is, which of these lesions are you going to treat? What is the strategy? What is the PCI strategy you're going to employ in this particular case? That's really the question. The FIME PCI was, was a trial we did where we looked at 500 patients, and all of them had a baseline IFR um, without a pullback, just a baseline IFR, which had to be abnormal. And then what we told the investigators is, look, you treat all the lesions you want to treat. It doesn't matter how you do it. When you're done, when you're happy and you're satisfied and normally you would stop, we asked you to do a blinded post-PCI IFR. And blinded because we didn't want them to additionally intervene because, you know, they were basically done, right? And what we found is that, first of all, 
there's really no correlation between the angiogram and the, the post-PCI physiology assessment. This is the most scary part of the trial. So it doesn't matter what residual stenosis you have by the angiogram, and this is not just a stent, this is just this is the entire vessel, right? The physiology is all over the place. There is no correlation between the angiogram and the physiology. So even if you think you did a good job, the truth is you might have or you might not have. You don't know. And overall, Neil said that in the intro, what we found is that 24% of patients, despite having an angiographically successful PCI, still had significant residual ischemia with an IFR of 0.89 or less. The good news is that the vast majority, more than 80%, had focal lesions that were missed. So we have an opportunity to actually do additional PCI that is not so complex, or maybe just optimize the stent, which happened in 38% of cases where the stent wasn't optimized, to get to a better number. And why does it matter? Well, this is the one-year um, outcomes data. Patients who get to an optimal IFR, which was 0.95, which is why we use that now for defined GPS, have an event rate of less than 2%. Patients who have an IFR of 0.95 um, or less have a 6% event rate, basically a three times higher event rate among patients with a suboptimal um, post-PCI IFR.